Hey, all you single ladies out there. I'm Shanna Schutte, dating and relationship coach for Single Over 30, and I help Single Over 30 women learn how to attract a trustworthy, marriage-minded man. All right, so I'm so glad that you are here watching this video, but before I get started, I want to invite you to get my free download, Eight Ways to Invite a Man to Pursue You Without Chasing Him. If you haven't snagged it yet, I invite you to do that. The examples in it are gonna give you more clarity so that you understand, okay, am I chasing him? Am I not chasing him? What should I say? What should I do? All you have to do is head on over to singleover30.net slash invite. Again, that's singleover30.net slash invite. Okay, so on to today's topic, which is related to the information that I just gave, gave you. So I am going to show you today how to invite a man to pursue you without chasing him. So when I first met my husband, Clark, uh, when I was 43, uh, he became my husband three, year, three years later. Uh, I experienced something that I hadn't in other relationships with men, and that was peace and calm. There was zero dating drama, there were no games, there was no wondering where I stood with him, and it was really, really super refreshing. I finally felt seen and loved and adored, which, which is exactly what I've been looking for, um, and that I hadn't always felt since I was single until I was 46. My husband makes me laugh every day, but there were lots of reasons why this relationship was different than others that I had experienced. And that was because Clark pursued me and I didn't pursue him. And it hadn't always been the case in my relationships. There have been plenty of other times in my 20s and my 30s and even in my early 40s when I was the more interested party and I pined after men who gave me relational breadcrumbs or who played all kinds of cat and mouse games with me. And unfortunately, one of the things that I did that I often coach women not to do now is that I reserved my affections for men who had not reserved their affections for me. So I hoped incessantly that these guys would see that I was enough and that they would become really interested in me, that they would desire me in the way that I desired them. So what did I do? I chased them without even realizing it. I was trying to get love. So I thought that maybe that my actions would result in me getting what I wanted from them, which I wanted them to like me the way that I like them. I thought that they would see that I was enough. I thought that I could draw them to me somehow. Not the time I wasn't thinking this in my mind, but looking back, that's exactly what I wanted, right? And all this did was give me a whole lot of anxiety. So here's why, because when a woman pursues a man, it robs her of the satisfaction of knowing that she's desirable, that a guy is truly interested in her, and that she's a treasure. And as a result, what happens is she loses the peace and calm that she could have if she wouldn't chase him. But when she chases a man, she doesn't know she's desirable. She doesn't know that she's treasured, and she definitely doesn't know if a guy is really interested. So when my husband and I were getting to know one another, we were just friends. And during that time, I flew to Colorado Springs to visit a sick girlfriend uh, for a few days. And Clark offered at that time to drive me to the airport when I was on my way back to Atlanta. And um, while we were in his car on the way to the airport, he reached into the glove box and he pulled out an envelope and he handed it to me. And he said, I wrote you a note, but I don't want you to read it until you get on your flight. But because I'm really curious about things, I completely disobeyed those instructions <laughs> and I, the minute I got inside of the airport, I dove into the nearest women's restroom and I read it in one of the stalls. And what I read was just the sweetest love note. Now at the time it didn't really hit me that way because I was still sort of processing what I thought. But now looking back, it's like it was so awesome because it was intentional. It was what a lot of men didn't do for me. He wasn't vague about his intentions. He wasn't you know, giving me mixed signals. He was very upfront about what he felt. So when I tore open the on envelope and I read these words, they were just so tender. He said, I can't deny how I feel about you. And I know this might be complicated, but I wanna continue to get to know you. And most importantly, I think that you're really, really wonderful and I want you to be happy, whether it's with me or with someone else. And I just wanna tell you how I feel. So there was a whole lot more to the letter, but the gist of it, he was saying, I'm really interested in you and I wanna to get to know you better. And I wanna see where this goes. And I felt peace and calm with Clark because the roles were reversed. 
often from what I had experienced. So I could just be myself. I wasn't trying to prove to him that I was enough or that I was worthy. I wasn't trying to be more this or more that. And I wasn't thinking that he was better than me. Like he was up here and I was down here. And even as I think about this, and I've thought about it before when I've written about this, it just brings me this sigh of relief because I finally felt like someone was seeing me, if you know what I mean. And after finally marrying happily Clark at 46, I asked him if things would have been different if I had been the one to pursue him. Like what if I'd been the one to let him know first that I was interested? What if I had written that really sweet note to him or a sweet note to him professing my affection rather than him writing one for me? Like what I had done sometimes in the past. What if I had asked him if I could come and see him? What if I had asked him out, right? And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that at the beginning, but there needs to be a power shift, which I will talk about in just a second. What if I had been the one to come and see him in his town rather than the other way around? What if I'd planned most of our dates rather than him honoring me with that kind of gift? He said it wouldn't have worked out because I would have felt pressured. I would have thought that you were pushy. So if I'd been doing all of those things, he would have thought that I was being pushy towards him. So I want you to listen up to this because I just talked to someone yesterday and just to another woman last week, and they're telling me, you know, I get in relationships with men and I'm the one to pursue, and then they acquiesce and get in relationship with me, and then I feel like I'm the one doing all the work. So I want you to hear me out. One of a man's core needs is to be this pursuer. He needs to do this because he needs to know that you will let him be a man. Now, I'm not talking about a woman being suppressed and being stepped on and being a doormat, but he needs to know that you trust him to do whatever it is in the right way. So he needs to have that confidence. So whenever a woman becomes the pursuer, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about what that means with this download. If you get it off of my website, singleover30.net slash invite, it's going to give you some specific examples of pursuing and not pursuing. But when a woman pursues, um, she may come off in that she wants to be in charge. And men, real men, and I'm talking about guys who are not like passive and can be controlled, right? Real men do not want to be with women who want to try to control everything. I've heard of situations with women who are more on the controlling side and they end up with passing passive guys, right? So if you're the kind of woman who wants to feel protected and cherished and loved and honored and all that stuff, you want to let a man do this. So real men want to be with women who make them feel like men. And men need to know that the women in their lives see them as competent. You need this too. So that you don't have all this insecurity and fear when it comes into a relate comes to a relationship. Now I may not have totally believed this when I was single because I remember thinking, well, what's wrong with it? But then when I experienced the right way, oh my gosh, night and day as far as how I felt in the relationship, I felt safe and secure. Whereas before there was all this anxiety because I didn't ever know where it was going or where I stood with a guy. So this doesn't mean, I wanna put this, this caveat in here, this does not mean in any shape or form that you have to sit back and do nothing. It doesn't mean that you don't have any control at all. It doesn't mean that you have to be a doormat or that you are lesser than a guy. It means that you wanna give men a space to pursue you so that you feel like you're special. And it means that there is a right and wrong way to let a man know that you're interested. And you should let him know that you are interested because men need to be encouraged to pursue a woman. All right, so maybe you're groaning. <laughs> you're thinking, oh, so this is all so confusing. So what's the difference between inviting a man to pursue you and chasing him, right? So that's a really great question. So when you're chasing, here's what happens is you are doing most of the relational work. So you're trying to push the relationship to the next level. I heard another coach say, it's kind of like being in a boat. Like if the boat is, um, if, the, if dating is like a boat and you're both sitting in it, you're the one that's trying to row it to the next destination. You're the one trying to do all the relational work. And if you're kind of anxious, you might have a tendency to do that. Or if you are afraid of getting abandoned or afraid of getting rejected or feeling like you're not enough, you may be tempted to do that. You're trying to push the relationship to the next level. You're taking the lead by doing most of the relation, 
relationship work. You're the one who's always asking out, especially at the beginning of the relationship. Now, let me do, I do say that the power can shift, right? So dating and relationships, you probably heard me say this, are like tennis. So one person hits the ball, the other person hits it back. And at the beginning of the relationship, there's more sensitivity around all of that because a man needs to know that he's pursuing you. It's not game playing. It's not playing hard to get. It's just giving a man the opportunity to come after you so that you feel safe and so that he feels like he's doing the pursuing. But when you're inviting him to pursue you, instead of always hitting the tennis ball at him and he's standing there on the other side of the dating court, <laughs> he's getting all these balls um, um, hit at him, um, you're letting him know that you're interested and you're giving him space, like I said. So for example, here's an example. If you give a guy your number after meeting him, like let's say you give a guy, uh, you have a card in your purse and it has your Google Voice number or whatever on it, or an email that you have specifically reserved for um, situations which men would might reach out to you for a dating opportunity. If you give him a little card after meeting him and you give him a smile as you walk away, you are inviting him to pursue you, right? Because you have hit the ball and you're waiting for him to hit it back. But if you give him the card and then you um, call him after giving him your number, then you're chasing him, right? So one is an invitation and the other is a chase. So at the end of our first date, if you say, hey, I really had a great time, I really hope that we get to do it again, and you smile and you give him a wink, you're inviting him to pursue you. But when you call him and ask him out, you are chasing him. So again, there's a period of time in which there's more sensitivity around all this, and when you get further into the relationship, then the power can shift and there can be more equal stuff back and forth. So invitations are just that, they are invitations. And the important thing to remember is that it is possible to let a man know that you are interested without chasing him and you should let him know, like I said. So some women are so worried about coming off as inappropriate or like a insincere flirt or being overboard that they forget that men need to be encouraged, right? So they're so afraid of like flirting or like being um, chasing a guy that they won't even talk to a guy, right? Guys need to be encouraged. So if you're afraid of giving a guy the wrong idea, you won't give him any idea at all that you like him. So that's why I've created this download for you. Eight ways to invite a man to pursue you without chasing it. So in it, like I said, I show the difference between inviting a man to pursue you and chasing him. Go check it out. So I hope that you are encouraged. Remember that the dream that you have to love and be loved is possible. It happened for me. It can happen for you too, and I'll see you next time.